feel like I'm missing out on missing beer. <laughs> cool, good evening, good, evening, good evening everyone. I think it's funny how back you were saying, I think that if we had this event like three years ago, there would be like three people in the room. So I was reading a stat just now that like five years ago in 2012, there were only three funded startups in Thailand, and now they're over 75. And like fun, total funding over the last five years has grown over 100 times. I think it was what, two million in total funding raised in 2012, and now it's like over 175 mil. So that just shows how, how fast the ecosystem has grown and there's a lot of momentum, which means that there is a ton of opportunity in the, in the Thai landscape. So uh, what, we've, what we've done is we've, we've put together a distinguished panel to just sort of talk a little bit about, about the opportunity ahead and sort of their personal experience, um, having been in the, the Thai ecosystem for a while now. So um, it's funny we've got, it's gonna be a little bit confusing. I think we've got two Pauls and, and so Juan Arch says, I'm gonna call him Pat, <laughs> but everyone's benefit. And I'm trying to figure out how am I gonna refer to both of you, Paul S and Paul A. <laughs> cool, so um, all three of you have been a part of the high ecosystem, ecosystem for a long time now. So I think you've personally experienced the growth that we've seen in, in the landscape. Maybe you can share a little bit about how that's really changed and how that's accelerated, particularly over the last five years and, 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 and what opportunities you, you see ahead. Um, um, Paul, Paul S. Maybe start with you. Sure. So I think when we, when we first started, you know, back in you know early 2000, right, it was very difficult to get funding for just a Thailand-only play, and you know it was you always kind of had to have a regional strategy, at least for us, that it was difficult to just you know be focused on Thailand and build a Thai-only Thai startup and then get funding. Right, so today I think we're lucky now to have you know, basically a lot of investors to be able to look at Thailand only plays, whether it's an e com and fintech, there's a lot of opportunities in just the local Thai market itself. Um, but obviously, there's now a whole new wave of com competition, and you know, a lot of people kind of will dismiss, you know, I mean, the fact that you know, there's these big players that you actually have to start to look out for, right, when you build a startup, and when you think about consumer internet. You know, I would say whether it's line, you know, I mean, it's, you know, even, even the, um, um, the bigger players, um, you know, whether it's Alibaba, it's Tencent, right? It's, a, it's an interesting landscape now when you build a startup that you have to really think before you build something, how do you defend, right? And, and that's where, you know, uh, yes, there's opportunity, but at the, at the same time, it's, it's also a new competitive landscape that Thai companies have to really look out for. Would you, would you agree with that, Paul? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think for me, I, I, I look at Thailand through a slightly different lens, uh, you know, because I, I come from the corporate investment side. So, I mean, you, you threw out a couple of interesting numbers. Um, you know, this, this ecosystem is still quite young. Uh, I think a lot of it started to explode from 2012 going forward. So when you, when you talk about how much it's grown, it's grown from about $2 million of uh, VC investment, inbound VC investment in Thailand. And that was largely driven uh, by uh, you know, some of the earliest CVCs, which is um, the folks at AIS in Touch, uh, several of the members who are in the audience now at Beacon. Um, but that's actually grown to 175 million cumulative investment over the last five years. Uh, but if you look at that number, uh, most of that money comes from uh, uh, foreign VCs that are active in this market. So of that 75, a lot of it is, you know, companies like Golden Gate Ventures and, and Cyber Agent and, you know, all these fantastic VCs that are situated uh, in Singapore and elsewhere coming into this market. But if you look at homegrown venture capital, if you look at, say, InTouch, 500 Tokyo's, all the money that originates in Thailand, it's probably only about a third of that cumulative total. So you're talking, you know, maybe about 50 million out of that 175. Now, what's happened in Thailand is that in the last 18 months, you've seen an explosion of CBC activity. So you've seen four banks, uh, you've seen a few property companies, you've seen uh, the oil and gas, uh, you know, conglomerate, you've seen uh, the largest industrial conglomerate, all jump into this game and put together roughly about $300 million 
uh, in CDC funds. Um, which, granted, not all of that is, is going to be directed internally. A lot of it is to look for technologies overseas to bring back in. But $300 million is a phenomenal amount of leverage to apply to this, this market. And so what we're looking at is not just these big players that Paul was alluding to come into this market, but we're looking at foreign technologies that local players are also bringing into this market. So startups here not only have to compete with startups from China and Singapore and Malaysia coming to Thailand, but they got to compete with technologies from Silicon Valley, from uh, Tel Aviv, uh, from Hong Kong, that these big corporates are now looking to invest in and bring back to this home market. Definitely agree. We'll, we'll touch more on that in a sec. Um, Pat, do, do, you, do you have thoughts on that as well? I, I know the government's also committed a certain amount of funding for growing the startup ecosystem in, in, in the country as well. So um, we'll, we'll love to hear your thoughts on, 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 on some of the things that Paul said. Well, uh, because I'm the only one to come from the government side, uh, you take a look from the, the past, I would say, the past decades, around 12 years ago, you can see that uh, we have uh, venture capital industry has been established since the early 2000s and also some companies has been so called uh, split off from research and technology organizations and also uh, some university professors since the early days. Uh, I, I would say that that's, that marked the, 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 first, the, first, uh, the first years of a so called startup to me before, before we, we call that company as a startup. Uh, at that time, we usually call them as a tech-based company. So in that sense, you can see that uh, we, we have uh, a, bit, uh, a bit of this, a bit of that, uh, between VC and also uh, tech companies that split off from university and not below. And they have some investment in all of that, but it's not grown. That's, that's the, the, the past 10 years uh, in our business. Uh, I think since the early 2010, uh, they have a couple of people that graduate from the state that have experience from state family go back home and start to talk about the startup. Then I would say that that would be the first pioneer group from, from the government side to embark into this very risky uh, business, so called tech uh, savvy business. Uh, for the past two years, less than 24 months, the uh, Thai government has been. Uh, Put uh, startup in a very priority uh, agenda. So you can see that uh, we can consider it as a phase three. Now the government come, come into a big player. Uh, at this moment, we have uh, two big so called government funds from a government bank, each uh, account for two billion baht. Uh, they are seeking to, to invest in a C state or maybe three at this moment. Apart from that, uh, According to, to our experience, we can see that uh, uh, for the past three years, there, there is a big shift from our account at the idea that we support uh, around 300 startups in our account in, in many sectors. There has been shift from very traditional sector into a new platform economy. At this moment, there are around 45 percent of our recipients that's working on platform economy. But for the past three years. The majority is come from the green houses and manufacturing. Interesting. Um, going back to you, Paul. Paul. So I think you brought an interesting point just now, saying that like I think you're saying there was the, there has been over the last five years all the growth in funding. A lot of that has also come from for non island based non Thai investors, which would uh, with that investing in in the local ecosystem, which which I guess would imply that like you know I think they're all trying to capitalize on the growing opportunity. Um, within the ecosystem across the different uh, tech verticals. So, you know, what, what are some of the big opportunities you're, you're seeing? Uh, maybe, maybe your field and some of the exciting things that, that are happening in, 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 the, in the trends. Um, yeah, no, so I mean, uh, you know, from, from where we stand, you know, I would say the great majority of digital investments, uh, digital ventures investment activity is overseas, but we're now starting to spend time directing some of that fund uh, into the local market, mostly through our accelerator. Um, I would probably say over the last few years, um, e-commerce has obviously been 
one of the big drivers uh, for the startup ecosystem exploding. It's, it's been literally the foundation for startup growth uh, in in Thailand, and that's that was followed uh, last year by uh, this incredible interest in fintech. But you know what we're seeing is we're seeing growth in a variety of sectors across the board. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I, I'll use some anecdotal uh, evidence. Um, you know, Digital Ventures just opened up uh, its second accelerator batch. Uh, last, our first batch of the ten startups that we had come through, six of them were fintech. So we don't we don't restrict ourselves to fintech. We saw a lot of fintech. Uh, this uh, this batch, we had maybe two fintech apply. We took one. We saw a phenomenal amount of startups in the health and medtech space. Uh, we're seeing uh, companies in event management. Uh, we're seeing ed tech. Uh, we're seeing even some hard sciences. So uh, for me, I mean, I've always lamented that we've always been focused too much on sort of the easy types of startups, the lifestyle startups. But now we're starting to see um, people come in on hardware, IoT, uh, biotech, uh, some hardcore life sciences. So I would say um, the, the, the opportunity in Thailand is certainly opening up to a variety of verticals. Uh, I would certainly love to see more ed tech. That's, that's definitely an area that, that, there's a lot, that should be a lot of opportunity. I would certainly love to see uh, more activity in the social enterprise space. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm quite hopeful that in the next year or two, we're gonna see uh, an incredible diversity of, of startup activity. Yes, let, let me add on, on, on the one. First of all, <laughs> uh, that, that's true. That in, in, our, in our case, we have uh, two accelerators running this batch uh, in the regional, in, in Chiang Mai, and also in Bangkok. In Bangkok, we work closely with Tel Aviv BC. So the majority of firms, they, they, they work they works in the platform economy, but in fact, they, they mainly grab so-called research from universities and majority of them working on agricultural sectors, food sector and material science. So this is, this is I would say, it's not a trend yet, with a kind of so-called uh, so, so called weak signal for change, changing from uh, e-commerce into a deep tech startup. Then I would say that for the next couple of years, uh, you can see a lot of deep tech startup out of university and also out of time back. Paul, oh, um, I think I think e-commerce has been the most funded vertical within the tech space for the last five years. Probably taking the the lion's share of the funding. So maybe what, what do you what do you think? What are the opportunities you see in the space that you operate in? Yeah, I mean, you got to choose the, in, in e-commerce. The way we see it is that there's really three mega trends. One is really like you know when you think about building a brand online, you think about whether it's sales stock, you know, company we invested into raised twenty seven, Pomelo at eleven million. Right? You think about uh, online only brands, I think that you know, it, that's very defensible um, in, in, in the, when you look at the full cool landscape of like marketplace, uh, multi-brand retailing. So we really like the, the, um, the online only brand, um, but obviously even that's moving offline as well. Um, obviously in the middle, uh, the number two is uh, e-commerce enablers, which is which really interesting because that's what e-commerce does. but. You know, the way we look at it is WPP now is becoming an e-commerce enabler, right? Uh, DHL, right, moving up the, from, from logistics and moving up the food chain. That's an e-commerce enabler. And e-commerce is such a big such a big industry that I, we can see, you know, where you're talking about mega China funds coming into Southeast Asia, going, we have a remit, right, from our LPs that's like, we have to go with e-commerce enablers, right? So, what I find interesting is that they see that landscape in, in China being carved up already in marketplace. So the next phase for them is e-commerce enablers and brands. But I think there, there's still opportunities in marketplaces. I think there's niche marketplaces, the opportunities um, in Thailand, um, regional. You know, when you think about Thailand, there's no B2B marketplace. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different vertical marketplaces that you know, I think that uh, big opportunities. The, the challenge is that when you start to think about B2C today, going back to com com competition, you know, any consumer internet play, you've got to really worry about, you know, all the guys that own a lot of the traffic or own, you have to compete to own that end consumer, right? Whether it's 
go check going all the way upstream to media, you know, I mean, um, to, to media advertising and e-commerce. I, I can see the same thing with media companies going all the way down as well. So, you know, I think B2B is definitely more defensible in where it's at, but consumer internet, especially in the e-commerce sector, you know, one thing you gotta answer to I think every investor is like, how do you defend against these big players that can see what you're building as, uh, you know, 5% of a revenue stream that they can just gobble up or they can take out, right? So, the consumer internet space is very competitive and, and I think like, unless you're going into AI, blockchain, something that has a real like engineering team that's defensible, right? You know, like then you then it might even be an aqua, an aqua hire, or, or sorry, uh, um, an aqua buy. But we, but for me, I think it's B two B is you know is where I think the game is at. I think you mentioned a couple of interesting points there. So the foreign investment, um, China. Um, so what do you, I mean? You get Paul, Paul, your thoughts on obviously there's a, there's an influx of Chinese investment coming from a lot of strategics in China. I think recently JD.com announced a massive partnership it, over here as well. What are, what are your thoughts on, on, on how that's gonna impact the landscape moving forward? You know, uh, are there gonna be more opportunities? Obviously it comes in some challenges as well. Like what, do you, what, do you, what do you think the, the impact that investment would have? Uh, so from the FinTech perspective, uh, China's become a bit of a, a, a boogeyman for us because you know, you, you look at players like uh, Alipay, Tenpay, um, but it, it's, 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 I, I think it represents a broader trend, at least from the FinTech perspective, uh, in the sense that um, as a bank, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I was just speaking with, uh, you know, my peers from Beacon at KBank, and, um, you know, for us, uh, it's, it's becoming less of a matter of competition between one bank to another, and more about how tech companies are evolving into financial services companies, and that's what's become quite scary for us. So it's it's an Ali it's, it's an Alibaba going into AliPay. It's a, a company like uh, Facebook, the guys that are hosting up here, um, having a phenomenal reach and potentially entering financial services. It's companies like Starbucks, which has nine billion dollars in cash. Uh, through its card program, uh, trying to figure out how they're going to leverage that asset. So uh, for us, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, China coming into this market, um, you know, there, there's all this talk about, uh, you know, Southeast Asia becoming the next battleground for companies like, you know, Alibaba or um, Tencent for JD.com. Um, but really, what's happening is uh, every traditional business model. Uh, whether it's a bank, whether it's a retailer, uh, any type of company is now coming under assault by tech companies that are just radicalized, uh, are, are radically altering their business models. So um, again, you know, I mean, I, I can talk about China all day. I spent ten years in China, but for, for me, you know, my, you know, the, the big key trend is how tech companies are now invading the space of traditional companies with. Um, okay, I think maybe let's wrap up by by um, by getting your thoughts on you know what what would your dream scenario be for the for the Thai ecosystem over the medium to long term. Maybe maybe some of you. Uh, at this moment, we we have a platform called National Startup Committees uh, led by uh, Ministry of Finance. So we're trying to to do this our our end through uh, a lot of policy and also uh, a lot of instruments like uh, we are going to have uh, uh, startup visa in the near future. Uh, we already have national regulatory sandbox in place that uh, a lot of uh, situation can be plugged in with NSC, Bitcoin NSC, and also we have nine sectors to support apart from e-commerce and retail. So in that sense, I would say that the the, the the near future scenarios can be seen in two ways. Firstly, you can see a lot of deep tech startup out of Thailand. And also, uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, relaxing uh, rules and regulations from the government. And also, money is not a problem. It's really about idea. And, and another scenario that I'm, I'm quite worried about is about the linguistic capabilities of Thai, Thai startup. That's why I think 
the most likely scenario that we would like to see is that we would like to see more co-founder uh, among Thai startup, co-founding with Korean, co-founding with uh, Israeli, co-founding with any, any people around the world, so that we can be a real global startup hub. At this moment, this year, we are already number seven in the world for startup to, to, to design new business in Thailand, but we are number one in Asia. I'm not sure about next year. If the government would not succeed in this kind of so called promotion and package. I mean, I think it's just um, the getting more money definitely into the ecosystem. Um, obviously, you know, some of the exits potentially can help. But I mean, I think the education system, I think, really, I think you, need, you know, you need to change that to really be able to be competitive. I would say globally. But tactically, I would say, if you think about, you know, countries and 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 how they can be competitive. I would analyze them as, you know, what industry can, can Thai companies or Thai startups go into and support that can give them, you know, some competitive advantage? Meaning, is it ag tech, right? Agriculture tech? Is it travel tech, right? Because I think that Thailand can be specialized in specific verticals that can be, you know, really competitive against all these Southeast Asian neighbors. And I think that if you can focus on your specific verticals and be whether it, you know the full VC community aligns with that as well as you know be able to support specific verticals, I think then we might have competitive advantage. But honestly, it's going to be very difficult. And the other ones like ecom, fintech, it's very difficult because those are massive. As Paul was saying, they're just you know these big tech companies that can just you know they're focusing on. FinTech and you know across all these different revenue streams, right? So, you know, my 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 advice would be really, or my hope would be, you know, to to get ties um, the way they looked at the tourism industry. They need to look at like travel tech versus just the tourism industry because education and universities actually focus on that. But I think they should move it towards technology by verticals. Um, I, I would probably say my, my, my dream scenario, I think the one event that will probably trigger an explosion of activity in, in Thailand is either a Thai startup uh, raises a significant international C round, uh, which would indicate that Thai companies have reached a certain level of maturity to attract foreign capital, or you have a Thai startup exit at a minimum of $100 million, and that will start attracting entrepreneurs that see that entrepreneurship and startup is the path to greater riches and greater glory, rather than being just a hobby where they're just hacking it out and not sure if it's going to go anywhere. So I, I want to see, and then those are just either major rounds or one major exit. Uh, I, we don't need a unicorn, we just need a significant $100 million for exit, I think they can take off. Great, thank, thank, thanks a lot guys. I think all, all very great thoughts.